Okay, hello everyone. Great to see you guys. I hope everybody is doing great. Happy Friday. Um, as everybody is logging in, as always, if you just don't, if you don't mind, uh, just type in really quick where you're calling in from. If you're watching this on replay and just how you're doing today. So the biggest thing I love about these Fridays is our ability just to connect, to ask questions and to problem solve for our own unique bodies. And the, the way that I do that the best is when I get information is to either like write it pen to paper, try to teach it to somebody else quickly because that's how it really absorbs the best and then put it into play right away. So that's why I often ask like, on Facebook or here on the Kaya Fit app for these episodes, if you can type in questions so then we can start and continue on with these conversations just to get better at better at knowing how to optimize our body, our relationships, and just this beautiful, great world that we live in. So hi everyone, I'm Coach Nikki Warren. I am here in Lake Tahoe and today I'm talking about glucose monitoring. So instead of counting calories, um, I don't know if you guys saw, if you guys follow me on Instagram, so it's just Coach Nikki Warren, um, I'm tracking my glucose monitor. So I am not diabetic, um, not type one, not type two. I've opted to do this continuous glucose monitor to see how my body is metabolizing my food, my stress, my sleep, all of that. So I can see what my insulin levels and my glucose levels are doing throughout the day. Super interesting. I could geek out on this like for weeks on end. My mom's actually on the call um, as well. And I'd like to unmute uh, you mom at the end of this call and just kind of talk through some things. Um, but what I have learned so far, so one, okay, first let's start at the beginning. I get all excited and I get way, you know, way too in front of, of myself. So you can opt to do a glucose monitor, but today what we're going to talk about is regardless if you're uh, monitoring on an app, how your body is assimilating the food you eat and the things that are going on in your life. You, I'm going to give you ten tips to, that will what help what what will help regulate our glucose and help us absorb and stay more stable throughout our day, our week, our month, and our year. So what that does is if we if if the the way we metabolize food shoots our our blood sugar way up then one we have a lot of metabolic issues that happen if that continually happens so weight gain um i mean our metabolism regulates everything right so our metabolism regulates how well we sleep how we optimize our hormones, our metabolism, of how we feel like energetic energy, how we connect to other people, how we metabolize our food, how we get rid of stress. Like our, our metabolism, sometimes we just think about like your basal metabolic rate of like, what is my metabolism in my body and how well am I uh, functioning? Uh, but it has so much to do with every function in your body. So today when we talk about monitoring our glucose, you probably have heard me for many, many years talk about low glycemic index foods. So we're gonna talk about that. Um, any foods that are under 40, so you can just Google that, I'll go over some today, of course. Um, but thinking about what affects our glucose levels and how we can stabilize optimally for longer periods of time. So my sister, uh, Amy, she's a physician, and my sister, Steph, um, they both, uh, I think Steph started it first, and she wore one uh, for, I guess it's been a couple months ago, um, and it was just, it's been really interesting to watch through all the sisters and my mom as well to see what really affects you because you're unique? And so these 10 tips I'm going to give you will just help all of us. Uh, but in general, if you really want to see like, okay, does an 
oat milk latte, which fired up Steph's glucose uh, really high, or um, Amy had a piece of like homemade sourdough bread with jam on it that fired up hers. Um, for me, it's like my, I, at first, honestly, I was like, eh, I'm pretty good. Like my glucose isn't going super high. I'm always in the green. I feel like I, I eat like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Now, of course I don't eat like white bread. I eat like sprouted whole wheat bread. Um, and my glucose doesn't go super crazy at night or in the morning. But when I started researching more because of this talk that I get to give with you and like, uh, you know, watching how I absorb my food and really optimizing. So what I was looking for at first is just like normal levels. And I was like, yeah, I'm normal. It's good. But then when I started looking at like, how, like, optimal levels i have some work to do which is exciting and so this week and i'll uh, i'll again i'll um i will track my progress of what's going on on instagram so if you guys just go to coach nikki warren and i'll um in my stories i'll um tell you like how things are working with me because i've only had it on for this week um but i these are the things these 10 steps that i'm going to share with you whether you are monitoring or not these are things that you can do along with me that we can just have like for perceived feelings, perceived like, you know, in our exercise, perceived exertion, like with your heart rate. These are things that you just are going to ask yourself, do I feel good after I do this or do I not feel good? And because a lot of times when your blood sugar shoots really high, you get super lethargic, you don't feel good, you get these big crashes, you have lack of energy after you eat your meals. Those are all signs that we can optimize how you are metabolizing your food, your sleep, your stress levels, all of that. Okay, so um, I will dive in on a deeper level. Um, how to optimize or what actually what actually the numbers should look like but today just to keep it really simple i'm going to go over 10 tips that you can use that i'm going to use this next week so that we can all optimize how our bodies feel and rev up our metabolism to feel our absolute best so grab a pen grab a piece of paper let's dive in because we only have a few more minutes together so first is eat earlier so this is something that I'm not great at is I get busy in the morning. I grab my lemon water. I get my Urban Monte tea. Um, I'm usually like, I, I actually, I wanted to test my, um, my glucose level right now because I get super stressed in the morning because I've got a lot to do. I've got to get Kai out of the house. I've got to, um, you know, get ready for these like lives. So what I do is there's an app and you click the app and then you can click check glucose so then you put it right up there in your arm and then it will ding okay and then it says my glucose level is 101 so maybe mom check yours right now and type it in or anybody who has a monitor on type it in so you can see like when i woke up this is my fasting it's low. And then as my morning starts progressing, uh, I, my glucose levels start to rise. And 101 is fine. Like, you know, I, I obviously tell myself when I'm driving home from Kai, like, it's not the end of the world. Don't stress too much. Take a chill. So I could, you know, I have like resources to calm my stress level down. But in the morning going back to like what i was talking about eating early is i don't have time and so i just rush 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 until all of a sudden whatever like at 11 o'clock i'm starving and um, and then i either have my steel cut oats or and i'll tell you about that too and uh, my smoothie or whatever so number one is eat earlier so our pancreas you can eat the same meal at eight o'clock at night and eight o'clock in the morning, and your glucose level will be much higher at night than it will be in the morning. Because in the morning, we're meant to wake up, we're meant to metabolize, we're, we're meant to 
Oh, nice mom. Perfect. Uh, we are meant to, so my mom is 117 type in if you've already had breakfast. Um, so we are meant to start metabolizing food, wake up and have like that, our glucose levels. And so you've got your fasting glucose level, which is overnight. Then you have your after meal glucose level, and then you have your stable glucose level through the day. So in the morning, we're meant to start like waking up. So when we eat a meal, we metabolize it much more effectively. It doesn't like the calories, same, same calories, right? Same calories at 8 p.m., same calories at 8 a.m. We are may we we burn those calories more effectively and it doesn't increase our glucose level the same. So eat early. So my goal this week is I'm going to, which the, the second tip is intermittent fasting. So this week, what I'm going to do is stop eating by 5 p.m. And that's really early for me because our, you know, Kai has sports and all that kind of stuff. And so I'm going to stop eating by 5 p.m. And then I'm going to eat breakfast at 8 a.m. As long as I'm not coaching at like 8.15, I'm going to eat breakfast in the morning. And I'm just going to see how my glucose range throughout the day levels out. Now it takes a little bit of time. You can't, you can't expect to like in one day have it, it'll change slowly over time. So I'm going to eat earlier in the morning. And I know mom, you and Phil are good at this, but eat earlier in the morning and then stop eating later in the evening and afternoon. So one, eat earlier. Two, intermittent fasting. Now, I want to just say anything I say, this is really important that you check with your healthcare professionals and your healthcare providers, because these are just experiments that I do on my body. Of course, I do a lot of research, but everybody is different. And so it really is important that don't change anything without checking with the medications that you're taking and your healthcare provider and all of that. And intermittent fasting is one thing that I want us as women to be a little bit careful with, because we our hormone balances are very uh, particular compared to men. And if we uh, go long periods of not eating for multiple days in a row of doing like 18 hour fast and things like that, it has shown that it can cause us some um, effect, some like negative effects on our hormones. So especially if you're trying to have a baby or if you're like, younger and you're regulating and, and you know trying to figure out like how to regulate your periods and all that kind of stuff just be careful with intermittent fasting but what i do and what i'm going to do next week with intermittent fasting is just do like a 16 hour intermittent fasting so it's that that just means i'm going to stop eating at five and then going all the way till 16 hours the next day do i do that all the time no i'm doing it as an experiment to see how my glucose levels are affected by that. So play, a, play around with intermittent fasting, but what I can say for sure is it's better for us to stop eating the, at, at the evening hours, like afternoon, and then eat earlier in the morning. Uh, number three, which is no surprise, is kick out the sugar and the refined foods. So sugar and refined foods are have a really high glycemic index. Um, again, just kind of look at foods that have higher and lower glycemic index. The lower glycemic index foods are better. So the added sugars are really tough for us. Now, fruit is fine it's got fiber in it it's got like but don't put a bunch of fruit in your smoothie so that is a big no for your for shooting up your glycemic index keep your smoothies green like with like the low glycemic index so i usually get like blueberries from costco uh, uh raspberries blackberries are great don't put uh, bananas in your smoothie. If you want to eat a banana, eat a banana, but eat like a half a banana or eat a banana before you go for a run or something like that. Um, but when you're thinking about no sugar, just be a good label reader and anything over nine grams of sugar of the added sugar is a hard no. So there's a lot of sneaky things, right? Like yogurt, ketchup, um, like marinara sauce, like 
bread. There's so much sugar in so many different things that we don't even realize. So just start being a better label reader and try to, as much as possible, eat really minimally processed foods. So when you're looking at um, like almond milk, um, it's processed, right? But if you look at the ingredients or maybe you make it yourself, uh, the the least amount of ingredients, the better. And of course, you know, the environmental impact on like making sure our packaging is good as well. Okay, so no sugar. Now you're not gonna be surprised on this one. Number four is fiber is your friend. 51 grams of fiber is what they are suggesting to really help with your glucose levels and leveling out those glucose levels. Now to get 51 grams of fiber, you have to be pretty diligent and be a fiber seeker. That means eating legumes every single day, start slow so you don't get gassy. Um, the low glycemic fruits. So try to eat fruit, try to eat blueberries, raspberries, strawberries as your snacks. Um, tons of collard greens, broccoli. There's so many fun, fun ways to get your fiber. Um, nuts, seeds, whole grains, all of that. The fiber in our foods and in plant-based foods particularly there is like a metabolic function that actually helps regulate your blood sugar even like the next day and the next week. Uh, so the it is really, really important to think about how much fiber you're getting and know that that is gonna regulate your blood sugar even if you do have a really like heavy carbohydrate meal, it's gonna help you in the long term, not just for that meal, it helps you for lots, for like this whole next week. So as much as you can, count your fiber, track your fiber, maybe do that on MyFitnessPal. Um, and let's all try to get 51 grams of fiber. Woo! Um, okay, so fat and protein are also your friend. So if, if studies have shown that if you add fat and protein to a heavy or before a, a I don't want to say like a heavy carbohydrate meal because maybe like, so say if you're eating, um, let's just say like dinner. So if you think about, okay, I'm going to have a piece of my mom's homemade sourdough bread. So in order for me to metabolize that well, and for that not to shoot my, my glucose level up, and it's usually 45 minutes after your meal is when you see that increase in your glucose level. Then for your dinner, before you eat the bread, and you know, they say like 15 to 20 minutes, but just eat it before you eat your bread, is adding fat and protein. So the really good proteins are like anything, beans, um, tofu, tempeh, um, nuts, seeds, um, all of those, anytime you put fat and protein, like on your salads or anything, um, actually my sister Steph, when she eats a salad alone, she sees her blood glucose go way up. But then when she puts a, a handful of seeds and beans, it stabilizes. And so I didn't see mine shoot up too much because I, oh, but you know what? I put tahini in it, in my dressing. So tahini is a fat and a protein. Um, so just think about that when you are, you know, planning your meals. For me, I love steel cut oats in the morning. And if, and if I put hemp seeds, uh, walnuts and blueberries, I have not seen that high glycemic index uh or my my blood glucose go way up so when you're thinking about okay i'm gonna have like a high carbohydrate meal which is really healthy right you you can have like steel cut oats or you know whatever it is just add fat and protein to it and and sometimes even like the uh, a scoop of plant-based protein into your smoothies or the vanilla flavor into your oatmeal is awesome Okay, so fat, fat and protein, um, apple cider vinegar. So uh, we sell, if you guys wanna buy some, just let, let us know. You can just direct message me or you can go on our app and buy it, but it's apple cider vinegar. So it's Apple Ever After, which is so cute from Aura. And um, 
it's this as well. So if you just put a little bit of apple cider vinegar with each of your meals and even just taking apple cider vinegar, this apple cider vinegar has a bunch of other like great stuff in it. But if you just put a little bit of apple cider vinegar in like your lemon water, um, you put some on your salad, you put some in, you know, whatever you're cooking, it helps regulate your blood sugar. So studies have shown that just a small amount of apple cider vinegar is super helpful with your glucose levels, which I loved. I thought that was awesome because that's what, that's kind of a new thing, not a new thing. We've done apple cider vinegar forever and ever, but now I'm like, I've never really taken like the apple cider vinegar supplements. Um, and I have been the last, um, I don't know, month or two. And maybe that's why my my levels aren't going crazy. Um, okay, so my favorite, and you guys know this, is exercise. So exercising just 30 to one hour uh, a day helps you your glucose levels for days and weeks to come. So it is super significant in how you're metabolizing your sugars and how you're regulating your metabolism. Um, one thing that we've all across the board, my mom, um, Steph, Amy, and myself have have figured out that after a meal, if you just walk around the block really quickly, so five to 10 minutes, your glucose level doesn't shoot up as high and it regulates much more effectively. There's like a Chinese proverb that says after every meal, uh, walk a hundred steps and you'll live to 99. Um, and then all of a sudden, like when I was like looking at like my actual levels after my meal and just do, I would even like run around my house real quick and just count out a hundred steps really fast. And cause sometimes you can't go outside, right? You're working or whatever it is. Um, and it's really helped. So just think about that after any meal, take a quick lap wherever it is, even if you're going to the restroom, just do a little fast feet, even if people think you're weird, uh, fast feet, and it will, that will also help. Um, but exercising more often is, is really, really important for a lot of different functions. But right now we're talking about like our glucose levels. So when you think about, um, if you exercise for that one hour in the morning or one hour at lunch or one hour at the end of the day, that is not just helping you in that day, it's helping you with days to come. And the more often that you do that, and the more often you can move your body throughout the day, not just that one hour or that 30 minutes, the more that you're, you're level out your glucose and you'll be able to metabolize your food. So exercise as much as you can all the time. That's my favorite. Um, I wish I could just uh, move and work out and have fun all day long. But as you, as you as well, probably, I do have to sit and work. So I just remind myself that after a meal, go for a hot lap. Okay, sleep is a big one. Uh, sleeping eight hours a night. I know I always say seven to eight, um, but really eight hours is optimal, um, especially when we're looking at our blood glucose levels. So if you are not sleeping eight hours, uh, think about the things that you can do to help your sleep habits um, and just get more optimal sleep, more REM sleep. So um, for me, I just ordered a new mattress, but I'll let you guys know it's called Eight Sleep um, and it like regulates your temperature at night. So if you can open a window in Tahoe, I can't because it would be freezing, but keep your room cold keep your room dark, keep your sheets like yummy and clean, um, make sure that you don't have too much blue light before you go to bed, chill a little bit, maybe do a little um, meditation or a bath before you go to bed, um, some good herbal tea and keep the caffeine before noon if possible. So those are, so those are some of the things that can help you sleep. Uh, nine, what I talked about at the beginning is stress. So stress is a big issue when it comes to regulating your glucose and if you can like it, it's silly but it is a little stressful for me on these mornings because you know I wake up really early I you know I plan these talks kind of throughout the week but I do all of my writing 
early in the morning and then I get up and I make Kai his breakfast and his lunch and I get him to school and then I come back and I have to make sure all my technology works to, to be here. And so I feel my stress levels rise. And so just notice when you're feeling your stress levels rise, whether it's an uncomfortable conversation, whether it's just the stresses of, of home living and all the things that we do and just take a breath. So just right now, kind of give yourself a like once over, like, okay, how's my body feeling? How's my heart rate? Those kind of things. And then take a big breath and see if you can get your inhale to raise your belly. So that's kind of getting that oxygen all the way down into your diaphragm and then a big audible exhale. <sighs> inhale. Big audible exhale. And so you're never going to not have stress in your life. That's just, that's, you know, part of being a human being. But the more that we can bring awareness to how to calm ourselves, regardless of what's going on on the outside, the better we're going to get at slowly taking those cortisol levels down, which helps us in all the different ways. Okay, and um, last but not least is limit saturated fat. So saturated fat studies have shown that it does increase um, that your resting that that normal blood glucose levels. So limit the saturated fat. So I'm going to go over these really quick, grab a pen, uh, circle the ones that you're going to work on, and I'm going to work on them as well. Eat early, uh, avoid eating late. Maybe you want to experiment with intermittent fasting. That's just taking a break, a longer break overnight, or doing a couple full day fasts where you eat breakfast and then you don't eat again until the next breakfast. Um, I'm not great at that, but I wanted to say it because that's part of intermittent fasting. Uh, then no sugar um, or added sugar and less processed foods, more fiber. Let's all try for 51 grams of fiber. Add some fat and protein to your carbohydrate uh, before you eat a carbohydrate meal, and that will help regulate that insulin uh, and the blood glucose levels. Um, add apple cider vinegar. Um, at night, I take, or before my last meal, I take apple cider vinegar uh, just uh, 10 minutes before my meal. Um, in the morning, I put apple cider vinegar in my lemon water, and then I put on my salad. So exercise, 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 exercise. Join me at live stream classes. You can be right where you are. You can just open up your phone. You can go outside, go to the park. We work out together. We have so many classes all throughout the week, but whatever it is, just take more walks, be outside, exercise with a group of people that you like, um, and sleep eight hours, get a good night's sleep, and go to sleep earlier. Uh, because the earlier you sleep, the more REM sleep that you get. And we tend to get restless in the later hours, right? Two, three, we kind of get like a little bit more restless. Uh, nine is reduce the stress and 10 is reduce and limit the saturated fat. So I hope this was helpful. I love you guys very much, mom. I'm going to, I have like one minute. I wanted to just unmute you real quick just to see if you had anything that is like speaking to you or anything that's worked. So you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Oh, there you go. Can you hear me? Yeah. I think one of the things that I'd like to say is that as you get older, I'm 70. And so I kind of resigned myself to like, oh, things are not working the way they should because I'm old. Not true. So I think that the exercising and the things that you talked about, getting good sleep, kicking out sugar, all those things really, really help. And I feel like I'm 50. I mean, I feel like really yeah. good. But the one thing that really has worked with this um, sugar monitoring is the walking. So really think about that. Even if it just is five minutes, 10 minutes is optimal, but I ate yesterday. I don't know. It wasn't a great meal. It was 187, my blood sugar, 187, 10 minute walk. And it dropped 50 points. 50. Ooh, that's awesome, mom. That's great. Oh. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you yeah. so much for sharing that. And let's keep, let's keep brainstorming together and like, let's keep looking and then we'll share like on Facebook and Instagram, like our, 
ups and downs of our glucose ranges. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, love you all. Thank you so much. I hope to see you at the workout. Bye. Bye.